Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. And in today's video, we are going to be learning how to install and use TypeScript inside of our Electron applications. So without further ado, let's get started. All I currently have right now is a empty folder on my desktop with no files in it and Visual Studio Code opens. So let's get started. First thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to type in npm init, ah, npm init, dash y so that way we don't have to really look through any of that and inside this package.json we have these things okay next what i'm going to do is i'm going to type in npm install and we are going to install electron so let's get that installed as well as actually installing um uh, come on there we go npm install dash dev and we're going to install um, at type slash electron so that we can actually use and have TypeScript types and then npm install test save and if you don't have TypeScript installed you'll just have to run that so we can actually have access to the TSC command now that we have this installed we should be able to type in TSC dash dash init and it will create this TSC config file for us, which has these things. Now, let's actually edit one thing in the file. And if you typed that in with me, you should see the, um, so let me find it, the output directory. And if we uncomment this, we want our files, like our TypeScript files, to be builded and compiled into this directory. And I'm gonna call it dist for like distribution kind of thing. So dot slash D-I-S-T is all we have to put in here. And that is it actually. In our source directory, we'll call source is where we'll have all of our TypeScript files. And speaking of that, let's create one. So I'm gonna call it index.ts, which is gonna be like the starting point of our application. And once you create that file, move along to your package.json and we're going to change instead of index.js, we're going to point to this TF, this new compiled JS file that'll be in here. So we'll say dot slash dist for distribution slash index.js. You can call this whatever you want, but basically we want to get, we want to say the main file is in this folder. That's our entry point. Okay. And then we'll need to define a script, one for compiling our TypeScript, and we'll call this build and all we have to do is say tsc so as long as this package.json folder is in the same directory as the tsconfig.json we'll be good and then we'll have our traditional start scripts and what we'll do is we'll run npm run build and then after we're done we'll just run electron elec electron dot so when we build it it'll compile all the javascript or the typescript into the distribution folder and when we run start it'll do the same thing and then it'll actually start the application so let's actually get this application started first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create our html file that we're going to render index.html i'm going to type in exclamation point tab to get just a basic i'm an abbreviation and do type Perfect. And then I'm just going to say h1 hello hello from TypeScript. Perfect. So now that we have that, let's go into our index.ts, which remember we said was going to be our main entry point for the application once it's compiled to JavaScript. So let's actually do that. Let's import um, traditional electron stuff like app. Oh my app uh, ipc main is equal to require ah, not require sorry from electron so we'll need app ipc main and browser window perfect and we're going to do app dot on ready and we are going to create our windows so I'm just going to call create windows, which I have not created this function, but let's do that now. 
function create windows is going to return void and in here we will also make sure we have access to main is equal we'll just give it the type of browser window for now and we'll do we'll just set a basic height and width of let's say 600 900 we'll set the web preferences to um, preload so when we want to use a preload script you got to remember that this is going to okay so if you think about it when we're preloading this we're basically in the directory of distribution already because we're running we're assuming we're in the index.js file at this point so we don't have to go back out of source and into dist we just go into um, our preload which i'll put here js and remember it'll be dot js whenever you're referencing files because we're assuming it's already preloaded or it's already compiled at that point next we're going to do main window dot load file and similarly we are going to load we're going to leave the distribution directory because it'll be dists and then index.js and we'll go back to the index.html index.html and then we'll just say main window dot on ready to show main window dot show show and we'll set show to false by default perfect so if you have any questions about these you can actually look in the previous episodes about our electron tutorial series and hopefully it'll give you a better understanding now let's continue on to our preload script because we need to actually define that dot ts for typescript and perfect so in the preload script we are going to do just like we did before import ipc uh, renderer and context I so oh wait, context bridge I think context bridge there we go and we're just gonna simply say context bridge dot there we go context bridge dot expose the main world API and we will create our little API and I'm just going to do a very, very simple API like uh, threads is going to be equal to, and let's get the CPU real quick, CPUs from OS. So we're just importing this function CPUs from the operating system module in Node. So we'll do CPUs, which will return an array for every single core we have, and I'll just set the length. Perfect. So this should now work. This in here should have access to that threads variable, but let's just triple check. And let's actually not put a source for the script just quite yet. And in here, I'm gonna create a folder for our renderer uh, JavaScript files, and we'll call this main.js, or ts, ts. And in here, we'll just say console.log Hello from hello from the renderer process. Perfect. So now when we run npm start, what's going to happen is oh there we go. What's going to happen is it's going to run npm build. So it's going to compile all of the source folders into the directory we set, which is distribution right here, which is empty as you can tell, and it'll copy the same structure. So there should be a folder in there with three jo types and JavaScript files. So let's see if that works. npm run build. That's a good sign. No errors. Perfect. So if you look in the distribution folder, we have an index.js, which is our entry point. You can see we're creating the main window. We have a preload.js, which is our preload script. And we have a main.js file, which is for a render. Perfect. So we actually shouldn't ever really have to look in there, but let's actually link this render file real quick. So we'll go into here and just get that file. So this is basically how you'd include your render process files inside of a TypeScript Electron build. 
you can just simply link to it from your JavaScript or your uh, HTML and just make sure you're linking the actual JavaScript, not the TypeScript files. And I'll just set defer so it loads after everything else. Perfect. Now let's actually run this and see if I messed anything up. So if we run npm start, it's going to run the build script, then it'll run the start script, and that is a good sign. We have our TypeScript application. There's no errors. Well, we get this warning, but it's something I don't look at right now. And we get hello from the render process. Now, one last thing I'll do is I'll show you how we were actually able to access, say, these threads. Because one thing you'll notice is you'll get a lot of um, type errors through TypeScript when trying to access um, anything from the context bridge. So let me actually show you how you'd handle that. So for example, if we have an HTML element, I'll say an H3, I'll give it an ID of cores, and we'll say core, core count is equal to zero by default. If I want to get this element, so in here we do const, um, const, what would it be? I'll just call it core is equal to documents dot get elements by ID, and we'll call it cores is what I think I called it. It did, perfect. So we'll say core count dot inner text is equal to, and if you remember in our preload script, we should be able to access it by doing the window, so the global object of window dot API dot threads. So API dot threads. Okay, now there's a few things going on here. So, API is not defined. We have this core count, which is also possibly not defined. And there's a whole bunch of things, which we the TypeScript is saying, hey, we don't know if this HTML element exists. We don't know if it's undefined or the string. We also don't know what API is. So when you don't know what something is in TypeScript, you can do at expect error and it'll assume that this line is valid and this is a kind of use at your own risk but we know we know that this will work so we know that this api module exists and dot threads is there and we also know that the id of cores is also right here so if we set that what we will get is it should work then and i'll just actually put these in here and i'll say core count and when we restart this application, we should be able to type in npm start. And we should see our core count. And we won't get any errors, hopefully, is the process. Yes, 12 cores, which is exactly how many cores I have on my machine. Uh, there we go. So there's the 12 cores. Perfect. So this is how we can actually use TypeScript inside of an Electron application. As you can tell, when we're actually doing this, it's compiling that core count and all these things into actual JavaScript. And it means that we can have type checking, things like that. Um, and we can continue developing our Electron app, but with the added features that TypeScript allows. So I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully this helped you incorporate TypeScript into your Electron app. If you had any questions or uh, would like to recommend a future topic for me to work on, please leave them down below in the comment section. And until then, I'll talk to you guys next time.